Yo, what's good? It's your boy Lowe, man. I'm excited to be back with you again today. That's right. It is the world according to Lowe. If you do not know, I am a award winning filmmaker, creative director. Man, I do a lot of things, but I really want you to understand what I'm about to tell you right now. I love to see people win, man. I love to see people become the best versions of themselves. So I kind of call myself a people connoisseur. Think about that, you know really know how to deal with people, really know how to help you, just really hone in, block out the distractions because we all have them. And because of that, I created this platform where I could sit down with amazing creatives who make an impact on my life. That's why it's called the world according to low, but I allow you to come in. So, you know, that leads me to my guest today. I'm excited to let you know that this brother, man, listen, I, I'm a big Instagram person and I love um, actually I was doing an Instagram purge. If you don't know what that is, it is when I go through my follow list. And because sometimes people content change and you don't realize that um, they're not creating the content that brought you there. (laughs) So I clean that out and I only try to follow people that are inspiring or teach me things. And this brother, I saw his work and I came across it. And then what got me, and I'm going to tell you this, what got me was how he embraced and bigged up everybody around him. He doesn't even know I knew that. I was, I thought that. (laughs) But we're going to talk to it. I'm not going to hold off anymore. Welcome to the platform today. (laughs) Introduce yourself, man. I ain't going to do it. I'm going to let you do it. Uh, my name is Johnny Jones. I'm named after my father. He was also named Johnny Jones, so I'm pretty proud of that. There you go. Um, me? I mean, I'm a creator, as you pointed out. Uh, but I also, I consider my, like you consider yourself a people connoisseur. I consider myself a people connector. Hey. Um, and I've been blessed. I've really been blessed to just connect with phenomenal people. Um, one thing that at this point has been about 12, 13 years, I always like to say I'm people rich. Um, and I've, you know, I've been blessed to just, you know, looking back even before that point of knowing I've had some phenomenal people in my life that have pushed me to where I've gone. Um, and even and steadily, I just always look forward to steadily cultivating great things with those people, but then also meeting even more people that are phenomenal like yourself. So yeah. it's definitely a pleasure to be here to sit down with you. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like I say I'm just. So let's but, tell people what what do you do? What do I do? Uh, you know, I'm a photographer, videographer, um, documentarian, just creator. I've done websites. <laughs> you know, <laughs> last week I was, I, I, I mean, cover art for a friend of mine. He's a he's a hip hop artist, and I've done like five of his album covers. So I just create, yeah. you know, and that's like the cool things. I'm I'm learning to kind of. Take the the boxes and parameters off of it, and I mean, I just say I, I create, you know. So let's talk about that. When did you start it to? I guess when did you learn that you were a creative? Like, how did you get into this space? Again, you know, I always had people that push me, um, and so I, I always say my starting point was in the fifth grade. I started a school newspaper. I uh, had a, a principal. Uh, Miss Joanne Bonds <laughs> and I had a crazy idea with a buddy of mine, Tymon Wallace. Like he was an artist, he could draw. I was a writer. I was like, hey, you know, let's bring yeah. this together and start a school newspaper. I had a really good relationship with uh, Miss Bonds, <laughs> and you know, I was looking back, I was far more fearless than I realized. And I went and asked her. I was like, can we start a school newspaper? And she said, yeah. And so. You know, we actually, every week we would create this thing by hand. He would do the drawing, you know, it was before yeah. computers and all of that. Um, and, yeah, I mean, that was kind of, that put the battery in my back of just being able to take an idea and run with it. And, you know, from there, always been school photographer. 
Uh, when I was in college, I ran the student radio station at Howard University. So, um, you a bison? I am a proud bison. <laughs> I am very much so. That's yeah, one of my claim to fame as well. But um, yeah, I mean, I've just always been a creator, and you know, um, I took pride in always finding ways to create something from nothing. Now I'm trying to do a little more creating something from something. But <laughs> yeah, um, you know, that's always been just. Like the thing I've been I've been proud about, you know, throughout my journey. So you you start a paper in fifth grade. You start this school newspaper. You start taking photos. You're documenting things. And and everybody that listens to the podcast, or if you know me, know I am big on storytelling and documenting. Um, one thing I tell people all the time is ABD always be documenting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to steal that one. <laughs> but so I, I love this that. The seed was planted in fifth grade. Shout out to your principal for allowing you um, the opportunity to explore that gift. Now you start progressing through high school. You're continuing this path. Um, How did you start to see yourself grow from fifth grade to high school? Again, you know, I I always had people, um, administrators, so on and so forth, that supported anything that I wanted to do. Yeah, that same way with Miss John, Miss uh, Miss Bonds, ninth grade. I go to Forche High School in New Orleans. Um, I take the journalism class of my teacher, Mr. Petticore. Hey, <laughs> um, I'm like, hey, I wouldn't mind being the, the school photographer. And he just so happened to have this really cool Olympus photo uh, film camera. Film camera, thirty five millimeter. Not, yeah, and yeah. not only that, he 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 converted a closet into a dark room where you know he would. Um, basically process the film and develop it. And that was just, um, again, you know, that, that pushed me in another direction of, you know, can we start taking film, yeah. taking photos and um, doing that, docu- you know, documenting for the school newspaper. And for myself at that point, um, just really developing a, a passion of photography. I always like to say back then, though, I didn't, um, I didn't really learn the camera back then yeah. just until later when I really took it to the um, level that I am now with it. But um, I, I did, did develop that joy of just telling stories through photos, yeah. letting the photos say a lot more than what I could probably say with my words. So um, that was just, again, another another piece of it. Um, from there, I went to college. Um, Bobby Patton. He was uh, a guy a couple years older than me at Howard, took me under his wing at the radio station. I was just like this weird kid who would just go sit in the radio station. I knew I wanted to do something, but I was a little reserved, so it was kind of hard to get out of my shell to kind of really step up. So he basically dragged me up, (laughs) um, you know, and I became the promotions director. And that was another form of storytelling where... um, I basically we had to shape the story of this student radio station. And for me, um, I'd gotten away from photography a bit, but I had a, a friend of mine, Michael Victorian, had a camera. So he would kind of go around campus and just we just started documenting camera life or uh, campus life. And um, Howard actually had we converted to um, having the radio station broadcast on like our cable network. Cause before that you could only hear it yeah. in the hallway yeah. um, in our communications building. But once that happened, it kind of really blew up, you know, to this day, like that's still like the main thing and it's pretty cool. Um, but again, we, we just started documenting campus life and, you know, telling the story of what is, what it felt like to be a student at Howard university at that time. So let me interject right here. Let's give a little insight to Howard University, better known as the Mecca. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, it was, I like to say that was the best consecutive four years of my life. Um, it was, it was far, it far exceeded my expectations and my expectations were high. Just as far as for me, it really, that was the first time I, I got to see the fullness of being a black person and not just a black person in America. You know, like yeah. we had kids that literally from next door to me that were from Nigeria. I, one, one of my funniest moments was when I first got there, I met a, a guy. We were good friends. I was in school. Wally Cambridge. Yeah. He had a Caribbean accent. You not knowing anything. I'm like. Oh, you're from Jamaica. <laughs> and he looked at me, he's like, I'm not from Jamaica, I'm from Trinidad. And I'm like, wow, I never heard yeah. that. I, I just hear the accent, I just hear they're all Jamaican. <laughs> but from there, learning about all these different Caribbean yeah. countries that have people that look like me, but, you know, just 
totally different um, cultures, but it's, all, it's still yeah. was sort of that melting pot. So it was just that cool experience, coupled with you know true black excellence, you know, yeah. and seeing black excellence and it not being a subset of excellence is actually being like a next level of excellence. And right. my my you know my opinion, that's how it felt. Um, and it was great. I mean, still to this day, graduated almost twenty years ago, but. The connections that I made are still strong as ever. Um, but then even people that I didn't necessarily, you know, we weren't shooting marbles and things like that while we were at college, but in college, but still to be able to see the amazing things that they've gone on to do is, I mean, I can't, I can't say enough positive things about, you know, just my experience at, at Howard while I was there, but then also the connections yeah. that, uh, the, the, having that connection to a university like that, and then just the people that have come through it—I mean, that was—it was priceless. Now, during your time there, because, uh, like I said, you know, Howard is such an eclectic place, and the arts, medicine, law, all these things that you come across with, but none of that even touches the level of culture mm-hmm. that's there. So you're there, you're documenting all these things. It's helping shape your creativity even more. So now you leave Howard and what does a creative do? What does creative Johnny do at this point? So creative Johnny um, leaves Howard. I go and work at a uh, small radio station in North Carolina. Uh, I become entitled the marketing manager, but while there I get an (laughs) opportunity, I call it an opportunity to do everything. Um, And so by the time I left, I was De facto production director. Um, I left in 2009, so you're talking about we're in the midst of economic downturn. Yeah. Um, lots of cuts, lots of cuts that eventually I was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I myself was a casualty of. Uh, but from there, uh, during my time there, I was able to learn a lot. I was able to experience a lot. Uh, and again, I mean, I, there's nothing that I didn't get to not do while I was there. Um, and, you know, worked with a guy, Ron Stutz, who he just retired um, December 2020, but before that had been on the radio for 30 plus years. Every morning getting to see someone who loved their craft get up and do it. And, you know, for him, he made it look so effortlessly. Um, so I took great pride in being, you know, like, a right hand man to him, you know. We would go and do live broadcasts, and you know, I set everything up, and he just come. He may be running late, but as soon as he get in front of that microphone, it's just like it felt scripted. He was just so so great at doing yeah. it, so so natural. Um, and that's like that was one of the the joys of being able to work in such a you know small environment, yeah. small setting. But again, I was able to. If I had an idea, I didn't have to go up so many. Um, so many chains to have it yeah. come to life. It's like, okay, let's do it. And so that was just, as a creative, you know, that's like the thing. You like to have an idea, yeah. try it out. Everyone doesn't work, you know, but <laughs> hey, we get through it and we try something else the next time. And so, you know, that was really, um, I feel like all these things have, have kind of pushed me yeah. to what I am today. Now, what's funny is how similar a, a lot of our stories are. Because I work with Clear Channel. Oh, man. Okay. But I was the (laughs) overnight guy. So I I had all the R&B and, you know, uh, love, DJ love. (laughs) You got the love hour. and So at first, um, shout out to uh, Reggie Bates. He he gave me my opportunity to uh, get in and understand what radio was and how... You know, really, it, it is an art to keep people tuned in. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. when you do it at the night shift, you get the weirdos mm. and you get the lonely folks. Yeah. Who don't. And then, you know, I'm doing call ins and it, it was just a <laughs> whole. But it taught me so much. It taught me how to be diverse and, and be disciplined because. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, I remember one time I like when I first started, I fell asleep. Like oh, it was like man. two in the morning, and nothing was on the radio, and the phones like ringing off the hook. And and the station manager was like, "Why am I hearing silence on the radio?" And I'm like, "Oh my bad, I put a commercial on and forgot to 
<laughs> fade the music back up and and it just taught you discipline. Oh man. yeah. Well, and yeah. and I like that because, you know, there are certain things about being a creative that everybody wants to jump into. Oh, I wanna buy a camera. Like I can't tell you every week I'm getting questions. What camera should I buy? I want to get into video. I want to get into photography. I want to do this and that. Like, when can I, should I make a website? I'm like, what are you making a website for? (laughs) Like, you haven't even, like, get into the craft of it. And a lot of times we always want the results of something. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to talk a little bit with you about, because you, um, you, 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 you're in these creative spaces. You're in these areas where you could be at a major concert, festival event um, today. Tomorrow, you could be somewhere else. But within all of that, how are you keeping balance within your life? Yeah. So I actually had to sit down. Uh, this was probably December 2020. Um, my health just really, really fell on me. Um, and it was just a, I had to have a hard reset. Um, and, and even within that, I just looked at some other things as far as, you know, different things growing up, so on and so forth that we just power through, like, you know, it was like, man, I, I can't, I can't overthink it because I have to keep going. And no matter what, those type of things always catch up with you. And, uh, sure enough, it did. It yeah. caught up with me and. And moving forward, I'm like, you know, I, I just, I literally could not keep pushing through the way I'd, I'd, I had been up until, you know, that point, like 38 years of my life. So um, from there, I just basically had to start from scratch. And that was as far as the professional slash creative aspect. OK, what am I doing that I don't want to do anymore? Um, what am I doing that I don't need to do anymore? <laughs> like that was a major part of it. Um, and then what do I want to do? Um, what, like, what are those things that I, I, I look forward to if I got to do this tomorrow? I, you know, I have the, yeah. the energy, um, to do it. And so that's been a big piece of it. Um, you know, doing that. But before all of that, putting myself at the top of my, uh, excuse yeah. me, even before I go there, of yeah. course, definitely strengthening my relationship with God yeah. most high. Um, that just like, I mean, that's definitely still a work in progress, but that's yeah. been first and foremost, like I'm, 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 I'm nothing. I'm not even here without, you know, God giving me that chance. I had some great people that have been praying for me, um, throughout my life. Um, so just, so let's, so right there, your, your first step, because I like this to be a learning platform. Mm-hmm. So key one for you in developing balance within this creative lifestyle was acknowledging God in your your beliefs and your faith. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, just stepping back and, you know, realizing all this can be taken away, but on the other side of it, all of this is given. <laughs> I like know, that, yeah. It, it's given from above. Um, and uh, my wife, we, like I said, when I was, I was bouncing back, you know, I'm just like, man, you know, it's just... It's kind of a tough road. I don't feel deserving. And she said, none of us are deserving. Yeah. You know, like, man, like, you all, we're all blessed. You know, yeah. like, and that was like the key of like, let me, let me look at, let me always look at that feeling of gratitude. And literally from that, like, in that, in the midst of that, having to, for me, having to journal, like, every night. Wow. You know, I have my list of 10 things I'm grateful for at this very moment. Like, so no matter how terrible my day is, I'm always going to end my day with that form of gratitude. Um, and, and, you know, that's, we say humbling, but like, that's, that's truly is humbling, you know, to really just start listing those blessings out, you know, taking that time to, to now, give Now, how them. are you, how are you doing that? Is that like a, in a meditative space? No, I, I literally write it. Like, I, I could, I could pull it out and show you. Like, yeah. I have a, a list. And uh, within the midst of that, I, I started like a consistent, it started with like a consistent 100. Like, I want to do 100 days of doing that, eating right, exercise, so on and so forth. Now it's like I'm, I've converted that to this like 500. Style. Yeah, like this is my this is my personal standard. Um, and it, like I say, it's, it's, it's been beneficial. It, it helps keep uh, my priorities at the, at the top of mind where, um, you know, like, man, I'm, I'm just grateful. And gratitude is, the, is the, the head of everything, every step that I make. So that's first and foremost, um, just being grateful. And then from there... 
okay, what do I have to do to take care of myself? I can't do anything else if I'm not in you know in, in balance. So that's taking my vitamins every day, making sure yeah. I eat. Uh, for me, like say, since I've been in this new phase of my life, working out has become very important to me. So I was like, okay, before I do anything else, let me go get my workout in. You know, and then from there, what am I putting in my body? You know, how am I how am I feeding myself? Um, so doing all those things to keep myself in order. So then once I've done that, I can look at okay, family. Okay, how what where can I impact them? How can I show up for them? Where do I need to pull back? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that meant, I'll tell you, that's been a big piece of knowing, like, okay, this is an overextension for myself. So I just can't show up and, and be play this position or to answer this call that's going to throw me out of balance. Now, Johnny, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hey, yeah, maybe. Let's let's we gonna we gonna put some claps right here because you're giving some really good gems. So I want to. We, we acknowledge the first step was your faith and acknowledging God and your beliefs. Two, you you took time, intensive time, to meditate and to write out your intentional um, goals and things that you wanted to be grateful for oh, as yeah. well. So it 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 gave space. You give space number two for that. Three, you said you started to do physical activities that will allow you to stay ready physically oh yeah working out of some sort i'm sure that could be anything from walking um in that capacity or just whatever gives you that physical retention yeah absolutely. Um, because I, i'm i'm sitting here exploding man inside mm. and then you prioritize from what it sounds like to me you you made an intention to prioritize where your time is going absolutely Absolutely. Now, being, being very mindful and guarded of that. Now, let's talk about that because that's the trick. I think that's one of the trickiest parts of all of this. Right. Finding time or prioritizing time to realize what's important. How did you how did you discover the values that you would base certain things on? Because have clients tell us <laughs> clients will have you feeling like their emergency. Yeah. Is the priority. How did you deal with that versus seeing what does my family need? Because I heard family first. Mm -hmm. How did you how did you get to that point? I'll I'll be honest and say that it's still a work in progress. Um, I mean, all of this stuff is. Yeah, I I got to say we got the rest of our lives to get it right. (laughs) Um, It's definitely a work in progress. Um, A lot of it has come from. I, to say being burned that that's that puts so much of that sounds like I'm putting the blame on outer aspects, but ultimately it's been me. Yeah. Um taking on far more than I either I need to, want to, oh well this it's a good payday, so let me do it and it being the worst project ever. Um so just, you know, prioritizing, like I say, those things that I that I want to do, um, those things that won't throw me so far out of balance. Um and then Thankfully, my wife, she helps me with that, too. Uh, I had a project a couple months ago where that probably would have been my, my biggest payday ever. And she said, what are you doing it for? <laughs> money. Like, <laughs> but, you know, she was like, that's not that's not put that money. That money won't that money. In that project won't yeah. push you to where you really want to go and where you want to be. What's going to fulfill you? Um Shout out to the wife. Oh man, man look, I, that's Shout a podcast. Out. That's a podcast series in itself. Yeah, um, just being being a, being partnered up with her. Um, but that's the thing. Just really, for me, it's, it's it's been a matter of eliminating this running. Like, and that's the I, I've lived my whole life with that feel. Oh, I'm, I'm just I'm running. I've got to get to the next job. Yeah, like to game. something. Like I got. So I'm supposed to be just. In a constant state of running towards something, it's like you know you don't have to. That's where I'm at now. Like I still I don't have to with run. That. I don't have to run. Yeah. I, it's good to stay in motion, you know. Uh, but to eliminate that running aspect, and I mean that's helped a lot of just being able to step back again, look at those things. Like okay, wh- where do I want to be? Where do I want to show up? How do I want to show up? Um, and it makes space for connecting with the people like you. Um, Justin Williams, the great yeah. uh, mutual of ours. Justin is um, amazing. And just making space 
to be able to show up alongside or with those people, the people that to the core, they know your values. They know family is important. So I may have to yeah. say no or they know, I, I, I need to get home tonight. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, yeah. just lining up with that and that lines you up with those those clients, that same thing. They know what your values are. They, I had a good friend of mine. He would always say, I know your heart. You know, like mm. that that. That that still to this day I, I carry that because, you know, you always know I'm showing up with good intentions yeah. and things go wrong, but you know my intentions, you know my actions to try to make it go right were there. Like some things we just can't or inevitable or you know they just happen, but you know what I showed how I showed up. So you know we'll we'll work through it, we'll get through it and. We'll move ahead. You threw an extra little gem in there. <laughs> because I think a lot of times we don't value being partnered with people who also value us making those decisions. Yeah. Because sometimes that can be a reminder to me. Maybe we do all need to just pack up and go home. Because <laughs> it's easy sometimes to just say, hey, man, I'm a little tired. We'll just get a hotel and just hang out in the city, get yeah. some food and da-da-da. But that hour that you could just sacrifice to drive home, yeah. you know what I mean? Like the little sacrifices sometimes pay off the biggest rewards. Yeah. And I like that you said that because a lot of times um, we neglect those things Based on the fact that we want to document this and say, um, I'm doing it for the gram, so to speak. Right, you right, know, yeah. uh, look look what I'm doing versus just being effective and being working and allowing that to speak for us. Yeah. Um, I have similar things. I, I learned, I think I had to learn right before the pandemic, I had to learn how to say no. <laughs> Man. Man. That's like the greatest, like you know, cheat code to life. Yeah, you know, having that, the privilege and the the wherewithal to know when and how to say no, man, it, it's it's life changing. It frees you completely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I saw a difference in my family. Like you know, beautiful thing about family is that they know when you have a skill and a gift. They know when it's in demand. They know when you can offer things to people. But then when you're willing to make the sacrifice, not all the time. They don't want all the time. Yeah. They just want some time. And I had to realize that, like, I would trick myself into thinking I'm making this money. I'm grinding for them. Yeah. When that's not what they want. Yeah. They just want time. I'd say that the, the greatest currency we all have on the face of this earth. It's time. Oh, you, yeah. You can't get it's any invaluable. more. Yeah, it's invaluable. So you, let's talk a little bit more about, because this is one of the things that attracted me to follow you. You, you, you always champion the people you're around. You know, I, I can't say enough about the people I've been blessed to have in my life. Um, I also feel that God, he he truly blessed me um, by, you could say, spirit of discernment or um, just knowing relationships that are fruitful. Yeah. And not wasting time on relationships that this isn't really, this isn't serving me or you. Like, it's, sometimes you, you, you're the detriment. <laughs> you have to <laughs> pour yourself away. It happens, you yeah. know. Um, but I mean, as far as that, like as long as, long as I can remember, um, I've never been one. Oh man, I, mean, I want to be cool with everybody. Like no, like say yeah. I get to this to the point, but I can still recall the name. I can still go to Mobile and find Tymon Wallace or find his family <laughs> in a way for sure. Um, yeah. But you know, finding those those special relationships. And so that way I can we could I could truly pour into them and on the other end they can pour into me. Just being fruitful and yeah. you know, that's just been as long as I can remember, that's how I've I've moved and I've been fortunate to, man, just have some some really great people in my life and you know, to have my wife, like man, I again we could talk all the rest of this week just <laughs> about how Amazing she's been to me, how beneficial she's been to me, how she makes my life so much easier. And I feel like that's 
Again, that's one of those cheat codes in life. Yeah. Like partner well. I say it all the time, romantically, romantically, personally, professionally. Partner well. Partner well. Like that's that's that 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 like blessings come from God, but they often come through people, you know, and that's just like and that only is possible by being surrounded by good people. You know how people, oh man, you know your closest enemy is a like none yeah. of them, them you know, memes, all of that. I, I can't relate. I yeah. really can't relate because you know, the people that I've been fortunate to get close to and I've allowed in my space have been really good. Of course you got a few here and there, so on and so forth, but even with that, when it's been time to cut it off, it's always been it's now, always been pretty sweet. Now let's talk yeah. about that too, because that doesn't necessarily make you the popular guy oh, all no, the time. Man. And I don't want I don't have the stamina to be yeah. <laughs> you know, like I'm Mr. Get in and get out, you know. Yeah. Like, but uh, a lot of times do you and I'll ask you follow up with this. Do you feel like Allowing those type of relationships to continue too long subtracts from you Absolutely. over time. Absolutely. You're talking about the detrimental relationship? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, more, the most important thing is they're taking up space. Like, that's a relationship where if I had someone in here, I wouldn't have space to yeah. meet and meet a you and connect with you, vice versa. Because, oh, well, I can't hang with him because I got to hang with my home, but I don't really rock with him. He don't really rock with me, but we've known each other for 20 years. Like, I know so many people that have those type of relationships, and I'm looking like, why, y'all? Like, y'all don't like each other. <laughs> like, yeah. why are y'all still kicking? But, you know, again, that's, it's always like, you know, like say having that uh, openness, and then, you know, like say, yeah, I'm not the popular person, but that's great because I have space to let new people in my life. And, like I say, they're, been amazing, been beneficial, and you know my thing is I want to be equally, if not more. I want to yeah. be more actually, but yeah, at the least it's like man, let me let me be as beneficial to them as they are to me. Yeah, well that's cool, man. Now this is the part of the show where I like to switch gears a little bit, <laughs> help my listeners get to know a little bit more about who you are. So I got to ask, and I, I I like starting with this one. What are you currently listening to? The most here lately, you know. I um, I think I, I just posted it the other day. Um, I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, he's got a song. Is this vibrate higher? Mm-hmm. And I've been listening to that, but just those type of um, those type of song, whatever you call it, neo soul, but just like meditative kind yeah. of meditative R and B, you know that type of that type of space because. I'm, I'm, you know, just realizing those things, the things that you, you that you, as you're not um, focusing on them, but they're still kind of going in. Like Subliminally. It does. Yeah. Sub- so, you know, that song, that song itself is is is, is positive. It's, it's a lot of the things he's saying in that song are things that correlate with me personally. Um, so I've been just finding other songs, um, artists that are in that same lane to just, um, you know, Feed myself though that that type of music that type of energy, um, to keep me in a good space. You know, even when I'm, I'm with not, it. not mindfully, yeah, you know, tuned in. But it's just it's just always there. All right. right. So what are you watching? Um, it could be Netflix, whatever. What's what shows are you watching right now? Oh man, we're definitely watching uh, Abbott Elementary. You like, like that's it? Been, yeah. Uh, pretty pretty comical. I seem like it's gotten better week after week. So we've enjoyed that. I'm a big NBA guy. Okay. So uh, I got league pass. And then luckily uh, in New Orleans, like the Pelicans are on every other they night. They made Basically, a playoff. Yeah, look, we, we got the play-in game. And, um, you know, hopefully we have a playoff run. Um, but, they, I mean, win or lose, like they've just been very entertaining this yeah. year. So it's just been I got to ask, now. who do you think is going to take it home? Man, like I said – don't be surprised if we see a repeat. I believe that. I, I said, don't, don't. I, I, I can see the, the same finals, but I like the Bucks. I like how they they can lock in on defense. They can have enough offense. Um, Giannis, like no one can stop the guy. Very little egos. Oh yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's the difference between the Bucks and the and the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, well. the, there are no egos because you can almost player for player yeah. match someone yeah. similarities. Yeah, and you know, Drew Holiday is, I mean, he's a point guard that you want. You know, he just locks in, 
does his work, does what needs to get done, yeah. and goes home. You know, <laughs> that's that's a lot to be said right there. Sometimes, like man, people don't understand like so being a good supportive like person yeah. will take you far, oh, man. Yeah. Like. I tell people all the time, like, bro, I start, like, God has blessed me. I started my career with a bottle of Windex and a cleaning cloth. Like, <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was not the conventional way. I was doing the stuff that nobody wanted mm-hmm. to do. And every time, a door opened. Oh, yeah. Man. And I tell people, you will not be trusted with, how, like, how can you be trusted with people when you aren't willing to serve and Absolutely. do the stuff that you ask them to do. Yeah, I so mean, I like that. I like that point, man. Oh, yeah. Now, NBA, I get it. You you, you, you rock with NBA. But I got to know, what's your favorite movie? Because you're, cause you're, wow. you're a photographer as well as a videographer. So I know <laughs> you got to have a good movie that you, you go to. What's your, you know, what's your, is, this is, I have to stick with it just because it is what it is. As good as it gets. Um, this is a uh, Jack Nicholson. Jackal, yeah. yeah, Jack Nicholson, Cuba Gooding Jr. Um, what's the guy's that he used to host the late night show? Um, but Helen Hunt, Helen Hunt was yeah. in there. It's, yeah, it's, it's a great movie because it's funny to me. Um, but then I loved his his redeeming nature in the film where he he. Ba- he 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 started to recognize his shortcomings. Yeah. Um. But then he worked to work around them, and he became like. Wasn't you know, Diane Keaton in that too? Diane Keaton. I don't think it's, so. I'm trying to make sure I'm not getting plots. It was. Uh, Didn't he? Wasn't he? That sick? was another movie. But um, Craig Kinnear. Was that his name? Was that? That was sounds Craig right. Kinnear? I think it was Craig Kinnear. Um. But yeah, I mean, it was just I love the redeeming nature. Um. You know, just that. You know, flawed the person who wanted to be better. Yeah, and that, like, I mean, I, yeah, I can put that movie on right now, and I, everything I got going on, don't I matter. Watch it. You know, I'm just like <laughs> I'm sitting, I'm watching it. Two hours gone. You know? As good as it gets. <laughs> yeah, man, that's like my favorite movie. That's like twenty years now of just loving that movie. Right? See, that's the beauty to me that because, like I said, as storytellers, we can give people something. That they can re-ingest over and over, and it still feels like the first time. Oh yeah, man. every time. Like that's that's the level of like skill I want to I strive to get to where it leaves that impression, and when you come back, you get that same yeah. flavor again. Now um, you're rocking. I like this sweatshirt you got on. I don't know if everybody can see it, uh, but it says Jones and Friends. Yeah, Tell me a little man. bit about that. You know, this is this is the basis of me. Um, and it's funny because it was just something that I thought of. I was like, man, you know, I'm just rock this. My, uh, I, the, the, the thing that really made me do it, I was like, it'd be kind of cool, like how Chance rocked the three hats yeah. or whatever. It's like just my own thing. You know, I'd I rock. And uh, I, I, I made a first shirt, and my mom saw She's like, oh, that's cool. And so the next time I saw her, I gave her a shirt. So then my sister and my brother, like, man, you know, where, where's our shirt? So I had to get them one, and um, I think I may have posted on Instagram, you know, me yeah. wearing it or whatever. And, you know, I just had friends hitting me. And I, I just had the personal thought. Uh, and I feel bad, man, because I actually was going to bring... I was about to say, man, so, yeah, I, 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 I ain't gotta, in the crew yet. I, I ain't in the crew I long enough. I get the address and all of that. To, <laughs> or, you know, whenever you come over, I come back this way, get it to you. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, that was like cool thing. And then my thing with it is people always say, man, where can I buy one? It's like, yeah. oh, you can't buy it. Like, you, you but... You got to be initiated it, It's not even. It's just like, you just ask. And yeah. so, like, having that be just a cool thing for me, like, I'm honored if people yeah. want to wear it. And sure enough, they do. Um, but, again, you know, I'm, I'm so, so grateful for the people in my life and um, how beneficial they, they, they've been. So, you know, the friends is... Um, they're far more important to me. It was like a, I had a, a guy that my designer that that created this for me. Uh, head graphics was up hey. um, when he came over the design. He put my face on. I'm like, <laughs> you know, because I'm like behind the scenes kind of, you know, you know, in the cut kind of guy. Yeah. But I was like, man, this would be kind of cool rocking out that. Um, but you know, like I say that the friends piece was so it still is very yeah uh, important to me. So it's like you, know, you don't you don't get a Johnny Jones without yeah 
you know, the people, friends, friends of family, you know, all of that. Um, the people that have been along with me on this journey, yeah. um, you know, like, man, I've had so many people drag me so many places <laughs> that have ended up being very yeah. beneficial. So, man, like, I can't say enough about what how important the people, the friends. Man, I'm serious. Life. That aspect really, and I guess, you know, they say, you know, so to speak, sheep begat sheep because we all have something that we aspire to be. And we look for in others. One thing about me, ever since I've, my parents really instilled in me, giving and supporting people. Mm. Sometimes to my demise. (laughs) Um, But even in that, God restores us from, you know, everybody don't mean you any good. Some people will take all they can from you and leave you with nothing. Um, But I learned that. It still allows you to grow as a person when you can just love to see people at their best. And I I saw you, and I'm telling you, like I I I looked at you posted you posted a couple of things, and what got me wasn't the fact that you actually shared your friend's work. What it was the captions that you you wrote about them, and I'm thinking like, I know this man and his brother is sincere in his sharing because the captions were as if you were describing yourself like you most people when we're on social we write the best thing about us so you 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 know i'm out here you know (laughs) a lot of times it's either the drake quotes or you know it's something that you know just try to get it but then you rarely see people take their space like you said earlier and lend it to someone else's benefit. Man. And when I saw that, I was like, "Man, I, I don't, I don't know you. I didn't know you at the time, but I felt like it brought me in a little bit more about the character of who you were." And then when I saw the responses, because this is the good side of social media, when it's in a healthy space, you get to see. All of the beauty of what community can bring. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I just want to take this moment and just encourage you on that because oh, man. Yeah. that is what we need more of, in my opinion, when it comes to how do we properly use social space? Because now we can be so mean and ugly and nasty and often feel like there's no consequence. But yet here you are putting some good in the world, highlighting others, and yet seeing it come full circle. Because here we are. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. So I got to ask you this before we get out of here. All my creatives are going to still want to know, what do you shoot with? What do I shoot with? Um, as far as video, I'm a black magic guy. Okay. Um, I, I did a hard switch before that. I was uh, rocking out with Sony. Um, had this the A7S II, and man, I had that for about about five years. Yeah, um, rocking out with that pretty hard. Um, before that, I was all Canon, Canon yeah. photo and video. Um, and so now, as far as photos, still Canon Mark D, yeah. uh, 5D Mark IV. Um, love it. You know, sharp. I just got some new Sigma lenses for it, okay. so um, got some sharp images coming out of there. Um, but as far as yeah, as far as the black magic, just because the video stuff I wanted to do, I wanted to transition to doing more production stuff like this. Yeah. Um, and um, it's a really good setup, and yeah, I mean, I just love what I get out of the camera. So, what's your typical workflow? Like, you using the Canon? You're taking photos? Are you a Lightroom guy? Yeah, definitely Lightroom. Uh, I'm old school, man. Unfortunately, I still do most of my editing in Final Cut Seven. Like, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, like this week, this weekend, I've been um, editing a video for my uncle. So, I've been doing that in, in, in ten, and I've done, I, I've you know, I've done ten before. I've done Premiere. I was about to say um, seven. You you must have an old Mac Pro. Um, I mean, I got an iMac, but uh, it's just so I I, I I hard learned seven by way of coming from radio yeah. and working in uh, what, Adobe Edition or Cool Edit Pro. Cool, cool Edit, Edit Pro. So like yeah. the workflow is just they, they were pretty yeah. pretty similar. So. That's just like my mental because people don't realize hmm? Adobe stole that layout from Final Cut. It's kind of scary, y'all. Yeah, <laughs> like I be telling people who be getting like spicy in the in the talks. I'm like, 
Do your research, man. Oh yeah, yeah. So, it's, it, it, come on now, Apple. Yeah. Apple was pushing the envelope, man. Like so, that's um, that's just like my base is so white. But now I'm I'm, I'm switching over, um, because it will actually speed up my workflow, yeah. which I'm all about getting my time back. Um, so yeah, I mean that's that's just kind of how I rock out right now. Are you excited about the new Macs? They studios they just laid out. Nope, because uh, <laughs> I just you know like say I want to see once I, if I buy something I try not to look at nothing else for like two years. Yeah. So I just got a new iMac at the crib. Got my laptop last year, um, and so it's just like let me rock out with this. You sing good. By yeah. 2023, I will start yeah. peaking. Um, but I mean, yeah, I really just haven't. Everything's getting faster, man. Like, you know, we were just talking about this. I had a guy here by the name of Anthony Williams. We were talking about how a lot of this stuff now, man, is just fast turnarounds and yeah. how you can do so much on a mobile device. Man. Oh, yeah. Like, man. it's scary. Man, we, uh, Justin Williams, he sent me a video earlier today, Canva. And so, I mean, I'm. That's what I write. He called me, like, man, you're like a Canva expert. I'm like, I'm good in Canva. But in, in that video, they were showing how you could do video in Canva. Mm-hmm. And I'm not like, Man, like you really can do everything, everything. right in the palm of your hands. It's pretty, pretty everything. neat. But one, one more point to that. Um, that's like t- in looking at how what I want to do moving forward, so on and so forth. That 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 quickness. Like I feel like content has yeah. such a short shelf life now. So that's also that thing of looking to create things that will last more, or at least has a chance yeah. to last more. Like that's. That's kind of where I'm at as far as where I want to move in the next. So you want you want to move more form. into long form content? Uh, not necessarily long form, like or I mean, that's part form, of it, yeah. but th- that's part of it. But more so, creating things that that matter. Yeah, you know, things that it will have some some value. V- there we go. It I will like have it. some value a year from now, five years that's from now, ten years from now. Versus, oh, that was cool. Next, yeah. because you know what I realize is that. There's nothing new under the sun. So, you know, um, people laugh. But do you remember uh, when we were kids, they had the little thing you could put like the Oculus up and you oh, would yeah, pull it yeah, in yeah. pictures mm-hmm. and then it would just go in circles? Yeah. To me, that was like that version of TikTok back then. They just yeah, didn't have yeah, all the computers, yeah, yeah. but it was like, let me hurry up and mm-hmm. get to the next yep. slide, That's the great. next thing. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, now we just have better technology, but look at how Same. you can spend two hours on TikTok and not even realize it yeah. because it's automating. As yeah. soon as you finish one video, somebody else is doing it. Somebody yeah. else is doing it. There's a story. Now, there, and it's like, okay, we're training people to do these things, but people also still have a desire to ingest things that they find um, attractive or stimulating. Yeah. So that's why I was wondering if you would still, because like I really want to get more into like short film documentary stuff, mm-hmm. where you could tell these stories a little bit longer than what they would be accustomed to on a TikTok. You know, but it, that could be something people will find valuable. Oh yeah, 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 man. I'm I'm right there with you. Now, this is where you have the floor. You can tell us whatever you want to drop your socials, drop where you people can find you. This is your moment. Uh, first and foremost, I, I like to share uh, my favorite Bible verse, you know, Galatians 6, 9. It's like um, I always screw up like the exact verbatim <laughs> version of but like the basis of it is um, basically keep going. You know, because in due time you'll reap the rewards. Yeah, of, you know. So um, that's don't, like the don't basic. be weary in well doing. Yeah, in due season yeah, you will reap man, if you fail. Look not. it up, read it for yourself. Yeah. And this, it's great scripture. Yeah. I can't. Uh, that's like my favorite. I mean, yeah. I got it tattooed on me. Everything. Um, and that's just that's the basis of, of moving through this world. Like as far as being good to people, um, and people always talk about reciprocity, but it it may not come. Yeah. From that person you gave it to, but I mean, it, it, it comes it back to you in some form right. or another. Um, you know, just keeping that at top of mind and how you do things. Um, you know, matching energy. Like I'm not matching energy. Like yeah. I'm maintaining my own energy for me. You know, at a high level yeah. because, like, man, like I always want to be in a good place to be, to be blessed. Yeah. You know, and um, but yeah, I mean, that Galatians six nine. That's like 
that's like my that's my, the mind. Like, yeah, that's like the basis of everything for I do anything, like just kind of keeping that top of mind. Um, as far as me, Johnny Jones dot me, J O H N N Y, that's Instagram. Um, you know, just find me there. Um, I'm real cool if you whatever, reach yeah. out to me, like, um. I'm regular, you know. <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm, I'm regular. Man. I ain't gonna let you say you regular, man. But yeah. you, 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 you are very humble man. and and approachable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm honored. Like yeah. I, I was honored when you reached out, man. Like um, I get to say this to yeah. your face. Like uh, yeah, man, definitely. Um, you know, I was appreciative of, yeah, of, of you. You know, the, the initial kind words that you shared. You know, and then just reaching out. And it's always cool when you meet people. And everything. I know, Damn, man. man. Cool in real life, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely um, appreciative of that. And yeah, man. I mean. Yeah, man. It was. It's. <laughs> it's definitely because, um, like, when I turned forty. One of the things I I asked and prayed for was that like everything on the other threshold, other side of the threshold for forty was things that would be good for me, mm-hmm. people who would be um, solid people in my life that could just add value, man. Yeah. You know, when I was in my twenties and 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 thirties, like man, it was just chasing, yeah. trying to make a name, trying to prove. You know, I was you know. Enough to be in a room. Yeah. And then you realize, like, man, so many people are just destroying their own lives, trying to prove they're in the, like, to yeah. be in a room. And I was like, ah, that ain't really what I want, man. Yeah, like, boy. you know, of course we all want to pay bills and flourish and do well, but at what cost? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So, like, for me, I just was like, man, I don't, I don't want to take all this baggage, you know, in the latter part of my life. Yeah. And um, it's amazing how, like you mentioned earlier, when we make our intentions known, things just fall into place, man. Yeah. I'm, I have more peace now than I have ever had in my life, man. I'm meeting some of the most incredible people. And I met incredible people before, but then we all were pretty much just just in the rat race. Yeah. So you can't yeah. really appreciate yeah. people like you, you do when you are more present. In the conversation, that's the man. word there. That's the that's yeah. the, that's it. Being present, you yeah. know, having that space and energy to be present, yeah, and being intent to intentive to be willing to slow down enough to do that. Because um, I'm still struggling with that, man. Like I, I feel like if I'm not working, like something's wrong. But then, like I tell myself, like no, man, like it's it's okay. Yeah. So. You know, I really appreciate, man, you dropped so many nuggets today. Matter of fact, let me give you another <laughs> another round, man. You dropped some real nuggets today, dog. Like, I love learning. I love being a student of people who um, are living life and are doing it in a way that can make an impact. So I want to thank you again for coming on the podcast, man. You'll definitely be back. Hopefully, y'all see us doing some more stuff, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man, I appreciate being here and being on. So yeah. thank you. Thank man, you. shout out to the wife. Man, shout your wife out, man. Angie Jones, yeah. tech girl, 1908. She's a living legend. You know, it's like, man. <laughs> I always got to make sure my guys <laughs> shout the wife out. Man, make sure y'all get say her name because, yeah, you man. know, y'all I know we, we with strong women, oh, man. Yeah. Shout my bae, I love you. <laughs> Jamina Ballard. I love that's my wife, man. So. Hey, like I say, man, partner well. Yeah, partner. That's, I, that's, hey, that's that's, the, that's a, we not. I'm not gonna say nothing because I don't want to get at somebody <laughs> right now. But we gonna chop it up about that oh, off yeah. air. Oh, but uh, yeah, man. Um, as we get out of here, thank y'all for tuning into the world according to Low. I hope these episodes, this episode today, really gave you some value. I hope you will also take time to go listen to the other ones. If you do want to support your boy, if you want to help me continue to grow and continue to build. It's not going in my bank account. It's going towards production and helping other creatives um, to grow and scale. You can do that by going to my website, AloysiusBallard.com, and you will see a Patreon tab there. Guess what, man? You can sign up $5 a month. $5. Five dollars. That's nothing to you. You probably throw that away in your in in, in, a, in a McDonald's meal or something that's nasty. You don't need it anyway. So give your boy one <laughs> value meal, okay? <laughs> that will go a long way. What I do there, I try to give you a little more behind the scenes. We're gonna be launching some courses. 
Matter of fact, I'll probably bring Johnny in and talk photography, talk skill set. Some of y'all want to know why my picture's all blown out. We can, we can talk about that there. Y'all want to know how do I get a good lens? Can my kit lens take a good picture? All of that kind of stuff, man. Guess what? I want to talk about it too, but I need your help. So help me by, you know, just getting your boy a little, a little change. Starts at five dollars a month, man. We growing. So until next time, man. Thank y'all for tuning in, and I'm out. Peace.